we know that VTE prophylaxis is a really important part of surgical care. And for some reason, over the past decades, we still have not been able to break down this barrier and to make sure that patients get the best practice care every single time. Uh, I think we're doing better over the past few years about prescribing appropriate prophylaxis. You know, those numbers used to be in the 50% of patients are getting the appropriate prophylaxis ordered. Now many places are showing much, much higher percentages well into the 80s and 90%. So we're doing a much better job um, as clinicians getting the prevention uh, out to the patients that really, really need it. So I think the VTE rates are climbing for a few different reasons. Number one, we are just taking care of really sick patients in the, in the hospital. Surgical patients are just sicker and sicker than they have been over the past years. Uh, and I think that's potentially one reason why we're seeing more and more uh, DVT and PE events. Uh, I think the other reason we see more and more DVT and PE events has to do with surveillance bias. We are, all are thinking about, does the patient have a DVT? Does the patient have a PE? Our uh, interest is heightened and we're doing more and more tests to see if that is indeed the case. And I think that drives these rates, which uh, really is a problem for people who are doing quality measurement, but I think it's good for the patients if we're, if we're finding these events that are clinically meaningful. So I think the session really touched on a lot of important key factors for VTE prevention. Uh, we had to talk about uh, prophylaxis and deciding what prophylaxis is right for what patients. Decision support is a perfect example for that. It might be a paper tool. It might be built into your electronic medical record. Um, but using some tools to stratify patients into uh, higher or lower risk and helping decide what's the best medication or mechanical prophylaxis to be uh, using for them. I think that was a key takeaway message uh, from the whole session today. I think the other thing that our session touched on was the acceptance uh, of patients to take these prophylaxis medications because we've shown that a lot of these doses don't get administered and there are other reasons um, why this happens. And focusing on the patient and talking to the patient, engaging with the patient or VTE prevention is a perfect example for how we should engage with patients for many things related to their care, whether they are via quality metrics or things like get, preventing VTE or for things that are really important to patients and patient reported outcomes. We really need to include patients in the design and, and management of studies that we do and interventions that we do to improve the care that we're giving to everybody. The other thing we talked about was uh, implementation science. And even if you're not interested in venous thromboembolism prevention, there was a great talk on how do you change practice? How do you take evidence that's been published that you've read that you want to bring to your clinical setting, whether it's an operating room, an intensive care unit, a floor or a clinic, how do you actually make change in those settings? How do you bring that evidence into practice? Uh, I think that applies to the, the things we were talking about for DVT prevention, but it applies for so many other things that we do in medicine and surgery. Uh, that skill set and implementation is a really, really important takeaway, I think, from the session today.